Matthews, thank you for being here. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm very hot. I'm less hot now yes. because the, the night has drawn in, but I'm in Sicily on holiday with my family. So yeah. I've been also uh, been lucky enough to be, uh, have gone to Sicily in the past. It's a beautiful place, but it gets very, this is a very hot time of year in Sicily. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's very sweaty. It's, it's sort of <laughs> but I mean, I guess we should celebrate the fact that you're uh, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, where even though uh, the pandemic is not totally under control, people can at least travel and, and holiday to some degree. Yeah, this is true. It's good. And it's, a lot, it's weird. Even where I live in West London, it feels like a sort of regular, I mean, people are wearing masks, but it's not as sort of weird as the early days of the lockdown. Central London is very strange, but kind of where people live is sort of okay. But who knows? It's a, yes, it's a fingers weird. crossed yeah. that, uh, that, uh, that being okay spreads. Uh, that yeah. would be nice. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm very flattered to hear this, but your wife, uh, Keely Hawes, who I'm a huge mm. fan of as well, uh, she, she was on the show, and when you're on the show in person, you obviously are being denied this uh, great honor. You were given a late night uh, T-shirt, and I hear it's getting worn in your family. Uh, it's thre it's like hanging in rags. It's my youngest son's favorite. It's his all time favorite T-shirt, which is quite so for, a, for a teenage it. boy. That's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, so please let him know that I I understand that he is a one shirt in deficit, but because his father's on the show, we will get it to him eventually. Okay, wonderful. And they and I think Keely um, very happily took away a mug from you, which has lost its holder. So that now is a pen pot. Um, oh no, I'll take it. There's, I'm a of, very... there's a lot of Seth in our house. Little. I, I'm, I'm very. And you know, I should say this is just. Uh, it's not uh, what you're here promoting, but a lot of people are looking for television shows to watch uh, during uh, quarantine. Uh, I was introduced. Uh, to both you and Keely on a fantastic show, MI5, that uh, yeah, yeah. I think people should go back and watch. It's a fantastic, yeah. fantastic yeah. show. We look very young. We met on that show. We came, actually, we came to Sicily to sort of get away from it all, and we found out <laughs> very early on in the airport that um, Bodyguard, uh, a TV show that Keely did with a racy thriller with Richard Madden. Yes, on which TV I've also here. seen, yes. Yeah, it's on TV right now in Italy. So there's lots of sort of, Hey, hey, so there, yeah. So Keely's had a lot of attention. Um, that's really which, exciting because that's probably like three years ago for her now. Couple, of, yeah, two years, maybe two, three, yeah. Yeah, so that's nice yeah. to have a second life, life like that in a foreign country. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I heard your family reenacted a uh, British cooking show uh, early on in, when this first started. Yes, it's a, it's a it's a sort of day, I think it's a daytime TV show called Come Dine with Me. Okay. Um, it's horribly addictive if you're not doing much in the day. And anyway, we re we reenacted it, and it was good. It was, and the kids took it very seriously. And we had a small cash prize, but you, the idea is that you cook a meal from scratch uh, on consecutive nights, and then you're judged, and then you win the prize. And yeah, and, and are you I, are you a, are you a decent uh, cook? All things considered, my my vanity is that I'm a very good cook. Okay, and, I, and they and I they ganged up on me and I lost. So, oh, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, it was, it was fun, but not that I was sort of manfully pretending it was more fun than it was. They probably ganged up against you out of a petty jealousy. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. Well, they assumed that I would win. Cause I, th I think they did, but I, I used the, I made onion barges and it was the wrong flat. It was disgusting what I did, but it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also, had, we tried to do sort of virtuous things like reading hour, which didn't work. And, but it was good. Lockdown was all right. And they're all teenagers. Right. We, we all got on. It was sort of lovely, actually. It was quite... Yeah, I'm, I've got much younger children who uh, it is not... Their extra time with their parents, I think they're of the age where they're very happy about it. But uh, that's good if your teenagers survive through it. Yeah. I think that speaks well to the, the level of parent you are. I hope so, yeah. I'd like to... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to congratulate you on your Emmy nomination for Succession. It is, uh, Tom is as good a character as there is on TV. And again, having first been introduced to you in, in far more serious fare, mm. I was blown away uh, by how funny uh, this portrayal is. When you first read the character, did you, could you appreciate how funny it would be or were you just taken with how awkward it was? Because it is the most awkward scenes on television. I thought it was very, well, the pilot, uh, I, the pilot, it was very funny. He was such, he was so sort of pathetically um, ass kissing to Logan at the beginning. He has this watch that he's trying to give him. And then there's this sort of really horrible scene at the end where he turns on cousin Greg 
And I, that was the sort of thing that made me think, wow, okay, maybe this, um, and then they just sort of built on that. And it's just, a, it's, it, the truth is it's a real joy because as an actor, you sort of, sometimes you, if you have a bit of success in one kind of part, then you're offered a similar, you know, uh, parts like that. And you end up sort of getting in a, not getting in a rut, but you sort of have to be canny and try and do different things. And this was such a blast. It was such a breath of fresh air. That, well, um, it was a bunch of different things. It, I mean, one, you were, uh, uh, you know, you have an American accent and it's like yeah. a sort of, you all of a sudden have no uh, class or style and uh, very funny. So uh, I good. departure from everything I knew you to be good at. So I was uh, just, and you and Nicholas Braun are uh, many, much has been written about how it's, it's television's best romance. He's yeah. also nominated in your category. So is Kieran Culkin. Uh, yeah. All well deserved. Uh, will there be some uh, bragging rights at stake here if, if one of you were to, to be the well, winner? Kieran has already descended into threats of violence, yeah. and he's he's threatened to punch Nick in the yeah. if Nick yeah. wins. Yeah, it I'm, seems I'm, very uh, very I prone to rage, Kieran. Yeah, it's unprofessional apart from anything else, and it's yeah. and I just won't go there, and I I'll just be very gracious. And I'm going to get the Emmy people, if I win, to sort of split it into three, maybe, and so we can all share. That's very kind. Well, I think so. Uh, yeah. How are you feeling about... I think it's, you know, it's, it's sort of a mixed blessing. You know, there's nothing good about the fact that this will be a virtual Emmys, but, you know, you are saved having to go through the sort of dog and pony show that is required of a nominee. Yeah, it's quite scary, the whole thing. I've been nominated for various bits and pieces, and it's just, a, and it's very exciting, and then it's, and then it's sort of, it's, it's just frightening. Part, it's yeah. frightening because I've got to get up and say something if I win, and then you, then you don't win, and then you sort of feel, you know. So yeah. there are consolations of it not being, you know, of it being a sort of Zoom <laughs> thing. There are, um, but I will miss seeing everybody. I, I miss the sort of conviviality of it, and I miss, you know. And inevitably in those things, you meet a lot of old friends you haven't seen for ages and, you know, not just people in your car. So I'll miss that. Yeah, I, I always find the nicest part when I look back on it is if you have the opportunity as well to go up to somebody who you've never met before, who you're a fan of. Yeah. And I think, you know, can genuinely, people can tell when you're not, when you're just saying it. Yeah. People can also tell when you kind of go out of your way to say yeah, you just great. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, uh, another thing, the uh, conviviality I imagine you're missing is being with the cast of the show. You have a third mm -hmm. season coming that you have not been able to film. Do you guys, uh, are you ever given any sense of where the show is going? Because it is a show that has great, you know, twists and turns, for lack of a better term. Yeah, no, it's true. We, well, the first two seasons we had, we were sort of in blissful ignorance, or I was, I think. Brian knew a little bit more than it, and Jeremy wanted to know very much. And so Jesse's Jesse's very sort of generous on a, you know, if people want to know, he'll sort of give them little tidbits and ideas about where the character might go. But I, and I've had a little chat to him, so I know a little bit, but not, it's sort of lovely not knowing. And then you get the scripts and then it's... <laughs> Uh, it, I can imagine, I mean, it's such a, a tremendously well-written show. I imagine uh, it jumps off the page that way when you're reading it as well. It does. It does. It's it's just brilliant. That the writing is just amazing. And as you know, it's not it. It's sort of the really wonderful writing looks after you, as an actor. It all seems very sort of. You think, oh well, I know how to play this scene because it's, it's sort of telling me how to do it because it's so brilliant. It's so funny and angry and odd and you know caustic um, that it's just a, it's a joy for an actor. Your uh, congressional testimony scene was as uncomfortable <laughs> as I've been watching these. <laughs> In a long time, was it? I was I mean, really I scared shooting that. I was so scared. I was, and my heart was banging because you—they built this thing in in the studio in Queens, and I, you walk in, and my heart was thumping because there's all these extras who are, you know, the center. And I'd been watching little bits and pieces. I think the the Cohen thing would have been on C-SPAN, or you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, so I was sort of, you know, I'd watch little bits and bobs, and yeah, awful. I mean, it's nice to know that there were, they had actually built it in a way that you, as an actor, could also feel terrified because that totally. certainly no imagination. Came across. Right. It feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you can never trust everything you read online, but is it true that you are also a John Le Carre fan? I am. I am. See? My dad. Yeah, big. Uh, I've got a real soft spot. My dad gave me a Spy Came In from the Cold as my first. That was my first sort of proper grown-up book. I thought I was reading, and I, 
Yeah, I love A Perfect Spy is my favorite novel of all time, probably. That would be my. Uh, I watched that, I guess, miniseries a long time ago. Do you believe that's a miniseries that holds up? Should we also recommend that to everybody who's watching? I think so, yeah. That's a really, yeah. yeah. Brilliant acting and very, yeah, that was sort of, I think it was in the 80s. Um, Ray McAnally and Peter Egan. Oh, yeah, Ray McAnally, who. Uh, he played his, he his was, version of his dad, his real yeah. his man father, yeah. But I love, um, I love the older he gets, the, he doesn't sort of, John Carey doesn't, he sort of gets more politically aware and angry and he's not, you know, he's not sort of getting cozy in his old age. He's sort of still- I know, because it's, I, from what I read about him, he just is, is living a very lovely life, but uh, yeah. still very mad, which is, um, yeah, I'm which very is impressed with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, the takeaway for everybody should be to watch Succession. Uh, when you're done with that, MI5, uh, yeah. Only, you know, again, it's very long, but I would say uh, if you're a fan of you and Keely, I think just a couple seasons, right? Yeah, two, uh, two, two and a half, and then you All right, great. People, other people come in and, yeah. Yeah, then just move on to a perfect spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks so much for making the time. Congratulations. So well deserved. Great pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right.